let's look at Psalm 77 this evening, and I'm going to begin with uh, verse number 9. Is that what I told you, Dean? Verse 9? Okay. Verse number 9. Notice it says, Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath He in anger shut up His tender mercies? Selah. And I said, This is my infirmity. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember the wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Thou hast wrought with thine arms. Thou hast with thine arms redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. Let's pray, shall we? Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of our Scripture here tonight. And Lord, as we take just a few moments and, and look into your Word in this passage of Scripture here in Psalm 77, uh, give us some, some helpful things that will cause us to count our blessings, to name them one by one, and to be sure and thank you for all that you've done for us. And so, Lord, uh, help everyone to focus and to concentrate. There's uh, a little few more distractions here this evening without the nursery. But help us to, to, to listen carefully to what you'd have for each of us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Young man was feeling real proud of himself because he's a brand new college graduate. He had taken his CPA exam and passed it with flying colors. And so now he was a full-fledged, certified public accountant. And his father had been an immigrant to the U.S. and he now owned his own little business. So filled with his newly acquired knowledge, the college graduate uh, began to criticize his dad's way of keeping the books. He said, Dad, you don't even know how much profit you've made. Over here in this drawer are your accounts receivable and over there are your receipts. And, and you keep all your money locked up in the safe. You don't even have any idea how much you've made. And Dad looked at him and he said, Son, when I came to this country, all I owned was a pair of pants. Now your brother is a doctor. Your sister is an art teacher, and you are a CPA. Your mother and I own our own home. We have a car, and we own this little business. Now, son, add all that up, subtract the pants, and all the rest is profit. Okay? I like that guy. And you know what? That's what we have to do sometimes, is add it up and see where the profit is. I, I, uh, if, you, if you came, by the way, we all came into this world with nothing. And so anything you have right now, you know what that is? That's profit. Okay? God has been good to you. God has been good to me. And we want to look for ways to count our blessings and give thanks to God. And I just want to talk to you four, I think there's four places to look. I hope there's four. I'm, that's, I, I'm going to tell you that. If it's different, I'll tell you later. But four places to look. And number one, first of all, you know, it's interesting. Uh, God says we ought to look up. Look up, and when you look up, pray. Oftentimes when somebody's going through a hard time, we tell them, hey, just keep looking up, don't we? You know, up is an interesting word. Two-letter word. And it probably, has more, it probably has more meanings than almost any other word in the English language. It's easy to understand up, meaning upward to the sky or at the top of the list, but when we awaken in the morning, why do we wake up? At a meeting, why does the topic come up? Why do we speak up and why are the officers up for election? And why is it up to the secretary to write up a report? We call up our friends. Did your friend ever said, call me up? We use it to brighten up a room, polish up the silver, warm up leftovers, clean up the kitchen, lock up the house, fix up an old car. 
At times, that word has some, a pretty special meaning. People can stir up trouble, line up for tickets, work up an appetite, think up excuses. To be dressed is one thing, but to be dressed up is something altogether different. And that's special. This upward is confusing. A drain has to be opened up because it's stopped up. We open up a store in the morning, but we close it up at night. Sometimes we're pretty mixed up about up. You get all the proper uses of up, you can look it up in a dictionary, and it takes almost a fourth of a page and can contain, up can have about 30 definitions. So it can take up a lot of time. <laughs> that probably doesn't clear anything up for you. <laughs> I could go on, but I better wrap it up. So I'll shut up so you can get on with this. But, you know, we always say and we try to encourage folks that things are looking up or things are, you get through a crisis or you get through a hard time, that, hey, keep your chin up. Keep, keep looking up. Things are going to get better. And, and, and the, to encourage somebody, sometimes we say, I look up to you. And that's, that's to encourage them to keep on being a good example. We're trying to change somebody's focus from negative to positive. We tell them, get a, get, look up, man. Get, get the up look. Okay? But in Psalm 5 and verse 3, the psalmist said this, My voice... Shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. So that psalmist says, I'll look up, but I'm not just going to look up to look up. I'm going to look up to pray. When I look up, I'm going to look to God and I'm going to talk to Him. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. And so we lift up our eyes. And we pray, we lift, look up to God and pray. The story is told of a poor man who was given a loaf of bread. He thanked the baker, but the baker said, don't thank me. Thank the miller who made the flour. So he thanked the miller, but the miller said, don't thank me. Thank the farmer who planted the wheat. So he thanked the farmer, but the farmer said, well, don't thank me. Thank the Lord. He gave the sunshine and the rain and the fertility to the soil and that's why you have bread to eat. And somehow, no matter how sophisticated you get and how complicated things get or how long the food chain goes, it always comes back to God. It always comes back to giving thanks to Him. You can't create a kernel of corn or a kernel of wheat. You have to, it has to come from God. And God gives us what we need to live on this planet. God takes care of our needs. And so we look up and we... Give thanks to God. We look up to pray. Now I'll give you number two. We don't just look up, we look back. Notice what the psalmist said in Psalm 77. He said, verse 11, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely, I will remember the wonders of old. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember what God has done. I'm not gonna. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna forget it. And one way to do that is what the songwriter said: count your blessings, name them one by one. Take time to remember. Take time to write things down. How many ever had a great thought or got an idea, and you thought, "Man, that's really good. Boy, I really like that." And then you didn't write it down. And later on, you thought, "Hey, what was that great idea I had?" And it's gone. It's 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 left you, and because uh, you didn't take time to write it down. And one of the best ways to thank God and to praise God is be able to look back on what God has done. Would you look back where you've been and recall the blessings and the miracle? Will you look back and recall what God's done in your life? Can you, can you just look back and think about where you were a year ago or five years ago? Or where you were in your life 20 years ago? And where you are now? What God has done in your life? It's, it's, it, it, it's, it, it's caused to give praise and thanks to Him. You can give praise and thanks to God. You've been sick. You look back over just the last 12 months of 2017, there's times that you went through a period of sickness. But tonight you're here. Tonight you're well. 
God has healed you. God has helped you. And so you ought to praise Him for that. And thank Him for that. Look up and pray. Look back and remember. Number three, look forward and press on. What's Philippians 3.14? Paul said, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm pressing on. Uh, you know, I read a Peanuts cartoon. Lucy and Linus were sitting in front of the television set. Lucy looks at Linus and says, Go get me a glass of water. Linus looks surprised and he said, Why should I do anything for you? You never do anything for me. And Lucy looked at him and said, Okay, on your 75th birthday, I'll bake you a cake. Linus got up and headed to the kitchen. And the caption said, Life is always more pleasant when you have something to look forward to. You know, what are you looking forward to? Did you know? Did you know that as Christians, we have everything to look forward to? Oh, I know. It's, it's a blessing sometimes to look back and, and, and you can rejoice in, in what God has done in your life. I rejoice at the, 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 the opportunity I've had and the churches I've been able to be in and the men of God I got to hear and the preaching that influenced my life. And I thank God for that. And I look back at that. But listen, hey, you can't live life looking backward. You have to live life looking forward. God put our face this way. He put our heads this way. You can't turn it all the way around and look the other way. All right? You can briefly glance back you can briefly look back, but you can't look that way all the time. God made us to go forward. Because, listen, the best is yet to come. You know, it was, it was amazing. We listened the other night. Andy had a, uh, Pastor Jack Treber on, on his phone from North Valley Baptist Church out in Santa Clara, California. Brother Treber, oh, he's, I think he's 70 or right, right at 70 years of age. Getting close to there. You wouldn't, did you see it at all? You, you should, I, I mean, unbelievable. He's talking about uh, paying off, they, they have a property on De La Cruz Boulevard. They, they paid off their Clyde Avenue and they, they bought this property down there and they built this 3,000 seat auditorium, I think. I mean, it's a big, big place. It had $16.8 million worth of debt on it. And that's been how many years? Not that long. Uh, five years, maybe? Something like that? Five, six years, maybe seven? You know what? The debt now is half that. Eight some million. So he's talking about how we're going to get this debt, this, this, we're going to burn the mortgage on this property. Get this paid off. Then there's a, there's a motel. He's showing a picture of a motel. They want to purchase a motel for their college, for dormitories. And then, then there's a business next door to De La Cruz property. We want to get this, this, this business. And then, of course, you've got to paint these buildings and renovate these buildings and do this. Man, he's laying out all this vision. I think, wow, that guy's 70. And look at the vision that he has. And what he's saying is, hey, I don't look and say we met at Clyde Avenue on this little one acre of land and now we've got this acreage and we've got a college and we've got a big church. Man, I'll just enjoy the rest of my life. He's not saying that. He's saying, no, I think the best days are still forward. I think the best things are still to come. And that's the way you got to be. You always have to be going forward. What are you looking forward to? What do you look forward to? You know, some people wrote it. Yeah. You ought to look forward to going to church. Hey, you ought to look forward. I understand. You ought to look forward to getting up in the morning and spending time with God. Oh, I know. It may not be every morning. We, we, we all live in flesh. We understand that. But boy, once you get started. Have you ever, you ever not felt like it? But you got up and you got where you meet with God. You got your Bible out and you started to read. And then all of a sudden, boy, it was good. And you're glad you went. You see? You, you, you look forward to things. I don't know about you. I'm looking... I'm looking forward to 2018. You don't, you don't know the theme, but I know the theme. And I, I'm excited about 2018. God's gonna, I'm excited about helping people in the next year. I'm excited to see who God's going to bring across our path. How we're going to be able to 
influence our community? How many, how many missionaries are we going to be able to support? And how can we expand the gospel into the unreached people groups of the world? Looking forward to going to heaven. Hey, one of these days, Jesus is coming back. I don't know when it'll be, but I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be, and I know sometimes, I know young people, sometimes you hear pastors say that, and you're not so excited about it. I understand that. I, when I was your age, I probably wasn't either. I had some things I wanted to get done. But you know what? Once you, you spend a few seconds after Jesus comes, you'll be glad he did. You'll be glad he did. There'll be no regrets. Count your blessings. You look up, you pray, you look back, you remember, you look forward, you press on. And then number four, look again. Look again. So what do you mean? Look at Mark chapter 8, would you please? Mark chapter 8. Mark 8, verse number 22. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. <clears throat> and he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that he put his hands again upon his eyes, and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. He looked the first time and he goes, I see men like trees. In other words, he couldn't see clearly. They just, he couldn't distinguish between a tree and a man. Okay, And so God, uh, Jesus puts his hands on him again and says, now look up again. This time he saw everybody clearly. And so sometimes you have to look again. You remember after Mount Carmel, uh, the, the, the Elijah sent his servant up to look for a cloud. He says, I don't see anything. He said, go look again. Remember? Seven times he went to look until he see I see a cloud about the size of a man's hand, a man's fist. And uh, he said, we better go. Rain's coming. But he had to look again until he saw things clearly. Sometimes you have to look more than one time to see your circumstances through the eyes of faith. Sometimes our first reaction is not maybe what it ought to be. So we have to stop and look again and ask God to help us to see it the way He, should, he would have us see it. Have us look at our life the way He'd have us look at our life. Sometimes you get to feeling and you get down in the, the, the mully grubs and you get feeling sorry for yourself. And I want you to remember that the fact that you're in a home with electricity and running water and indoor plumbing, you're better off than 95% of the people in the world. And you better, get, you better look again and get a different perspective on how blessed you are and how good of a life you have. <clears throat> Our problems are opportunities to see God's solutions. Our problems are just opportunities to see God's solutions. Let me share this with you tonight. It says, forgive me when I whine. Forgive me when I whine. Today upon a bus, I saw a lovely maid with golden hair. I envied her. She seemed so nice. And how I wished I were so fair. When suddenly she rose to leave, I saw her hobble down the aisle. She had one foot and wore a crutch. But as she passed, she smiled. God, forgive me when I whine. I have two feet, and you are mine. I stopped to buy some sweets, and the boy who served me had such charm. He seemed to radiate good cheer. His manner was kind and warm. I said, it's nice to deal with you. Such courtesy I seldom find. He turned and said, oh, thank you, sir. And then I saw that he was blind. Oh God, forgive me when I whine. I have two eyes, and you are mine. Then walking down the street, I saw a child with eyes of blue. He stood and watched the others play. It seemed he knew not what to do. I stopped a moment, 
Then I said, why don't you join the others, dear? He looked ahead without a word, and then I knew he could not hear. Oh God, forgive me when I whine. I have two ears, and you are mine. With feet to take me where I'd go, and eyes to see the sunsets glow, and ears to hear what I would know, I'm blessed indeed, and you are mine, O oh God. Forgive me when I whine. Count your blessings. Look up and pray. Look back and remember. Look forward and press on. Look again and see clearly. Four places to look if you want to count your blessings. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. And Lord, I know it's Thanksgiving time and I, I pray that we'll all take time to, to reflect of your goodness to us. To take time to count our blessings. That we'll take time to look. To look up. To look back, to look forward, and to look again. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory that you deserve for your goodness to each one of us. Don't let us whine and complain. Help us to count those blessings. Help us to thank you for each and everything that you have given to us. We love you. I pray, God, that you'll speak to our hearts now as we hear the closing song this evening. Minister to us. It's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. All right. Don and Cindy are going to come and sing. We're going to turn this fan off, guys. Um, they always sing every year. I want to thank you, Lord. It's on the back of your bulletin. And um, just listen carefully to the words. Of the song. Is somebody getting this? Nobody nobody goes to the fan. Thank you, Bob. Can you get it, Nancy? You know what it is? No, that's the light, Nancy. Okay, Nancy, get away from the fan, all right? There you go. Thank you. <laughs> all right. You going to use this? You going to use this? Okay. For making the song to shine, putting the stars in the sky, the flowers that bloom, oceans so blue, thank you, Lord, for oh, the sparrows that sing, oh, they make sweet melody, the rivers that flow, the rain and the snow, thank you. You, Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me, thank you, Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord. For making me whole, saving my soul, thank you, Lord. For making my home and family, for all life joys you've given me. Shoes on my feet, plenty to eat, thank you, Lord. For the church to worship and pray For all the freedom I have today Sweet Spirit, I feel Your presence so real Thank you, Lord For being a friend so dear For giving my sad heart cheer For holding my hand when I could not stand Thank you, Lord, for giving your life for me on the cross of Calvary, for taking my place to mercy and grace. Thank you, Lord. I 
just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Saving my soul, thank you, Lord, for blessing our church this year, saving souls both far and near, for people to love, sent from above, thank you, Lord, for every family so dear. Serving you with joy and cheer for every gift front. Thank you. Everything you've done, making us one. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Just want to thank you. Now, when you go to Georgia, you got to come back at Thanksgiving and sing that song, all right? That's a stipulation, okay? That's a blessing. Well, God is good, isn't he? And uh, thank you. We do have a, uh, uh, what do they call these, lapel pins? It goes in the lapel of your coat or little pins that have our church logo on it, a new logo. I want everyone to have one of those when you leave tonight and uh, wear that around. And a good way to start witnessing to people and uh, talking to folks. I'll ask you about that. And uh, you can tell them about your church and tell them about your Savior and uh, lead some to Christ, okay? Uh, how many will be traveling for the Thanksgiving? You're going to do some traveling? Let me see your hand. Quite a few of you here. Okay, good. Be, be safe. Be careful. Uh, others of you enjoy your family and your friends or just enjoy you and Jesus whatever it is just enjoy it and thank God for his goodness to you and uh, we'll look forward to seeing everyone if not Friday night on Saturday or Sunday all right and uh, God bless you you are dismissed and uh, who's got these back there you do okay Leland's right there just pass by him if you didn't get your card yet go ahead and